I think, uh, you know, something that's you and I talk about quite a bit, it, it's, I guess people, people don't know how to like, I don't think that people understand what it's like to be, uh, <laughs> what it's like to be a heavier person and what it's like, like, um, I think it's hard for people to gain perspective and, and you've given me wonderful perspective cause we've had so many conversations about it. Uh, but like my urges are just, they're different than yours. Right. You know? And I think that, uh, when we talk about like pain, like we know better than to judge your pain versus my pain, right, uh, right. my brother dying versus you having someone die in your life. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for us to compare those things. Maybe something, uh, hit me differently at a different mm -hmm. time, or maybe something hit you differently at a different mm -hmm. time. Maybe you have a different interpretation of uh, those things. But when when you go through a time where you're thinking about making a decision towards eating something that you already know is not in your best interest, how fucking hard is that for you to block and are you getting a little bit more successful at it? Or does it sometimes feel like, cause you've lost like 60 pounds, maybe yeah. even a little bit more. You were 505 or 515, if you don't mind me saying. Right, I was like 510, 550, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and now you're four or 456 four this 56, morning. 456, yes. Fuck right. yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. So right, this uh, distinction between hunger and appetite is real. Like hunger is pretty manageable, right? Mm. You, you feel the sensations of hunger in your gut. It's a little rumble in the tummy, a little uncomfortable. You're like, oh, I'm hungry, I should eat, or I wanna eat, or whatever. But appetite is like a different thing. Appetite, I was trying to, I was listening to your guest today, and like, I feel appetite in the back of my head. It's like a tingle. Mm. It's, it's a drive, it's a drive like, mm -hmm. you know, you're stressed, you're stressed, you need to eat. If you know, you're stressed, you need to eat. It's, it's, it's broken, I mean, mm -hmm. and I know it's broken, but sometimes, and I was trying to explain this to Mark the other day, oh, I get nervous. Um, you can like be sometimes, as nervous as you'd like, and you can cry, and you can laugh, and you can get mad. You can I'll, do whatever you'd like. All this uh, panic, flop sweat, I'm just going to say it's tears, and it'll be full, fully accepted. But like sometimes you get stressed, and then you're dealing with like the nuances of that stress, and then like this new monster shows up. Oh, you really should eat. <laughs> that will kill the stress. Mm. And then now you're fighting two fights in your own head. And I, I mean, I've, I, it was the other night, I think I might have texted you. I literally had to yell at myself, like this internal yelling, like, stop. You are not going to act out on this desire to binge, eat trash food right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hope as I get cleaner and I get better at this and my gut biome and my neurochemistry and my pathways in my brain, that, you know, hopefully I can form new pathways and, and, and defeat this once and for all. I certainly hope that it's not going to just be a lifetime of battles. When you do lose, though, it, you're not losing the same way. Like, it's it's less, right? Like, when you uh, are having a binge, I don't, from what I understand, it doesn't seem like it's anything like what you were doing maybe previously. Yeah, I mean, it just, you know, I, I identified a long time ago that there is just this, uh, like, this uh, broken autopilot mm. that drives my appetite. And whenever I let go of the wheel, it just wants to just take me to, this, you know, bad mm. places. And I just have to fight it, you know? I Maybe you're right, maybe the habits are starting to change. I hope so, you know? It's been a lifelong fight. Mm -hmm. Some years I'm more focused than others in fighting this fight. This year I've been pretty focused, last year I've been pretty focused. And uh, the gains are coming slow, but I have to keep pushing, right? So Yeah, and, how long has it been? You <laughs> lost about 60 pounds or so, and how long has that taken you? Because that's always the question, how long did it take? I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been like almost a year and a half. Yeah. But what I have gained is so much more mobility, like in spite of my, <laughs> my flop sweat right now. And the ability to walk around the block. Well, that's what I was going to say. We only like kind of partially walked around the no, building first time, I, I think. I used to get very winded just going back and forth to the dumpster outside, the, outside our house. Mm -hmm. Chris wanted to take me for a walk one time. We started at your front door. By the back door, I was like, hey, man, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. But I don't want to see what happens another hundred yards down yeah. the road. And he was always really cool about it and so forth. And, and now we take, we do, we do the walk, we do the one mile Great. walk. So, I mean, my mobility, my ability to uh, stay active and hold a little certain level mm -hmm. of just not being, you know, of light activity has really gone up a lot. And like, of course I want to lose more weight and I want to open up more opportunities in my life. You know, I want to go on a roller coaster someday, right? With my kids. Um, but 
just being able to go walk and I mean, I know it sounds so silly. No, it doesn't. It can be so easily taken for granted, but I was right on the edge. You know, mm. I I was pretty immobile before before COVID. COVID hit. I got super paranoid, big fatty. Everything inside said, you know, you need to this now or never, right? Now or never. But I just found myself staying inside all the time, ordering food in, afraid mm. to go out and get COVID. You know, didn't like to wear the mask because you think I look bad right now. I get so claustrophobic when mm. I wear a mask. Yeah. I feel my hot air coming back in my face. You're in the checkout aisle in the grocery store. You know, everyone's like, oh, look at the fatty. What's the fatty got in their grocery cart, right? And everyone wants to get so tight. And I would just have these, like this panic attack right now is a mild one. I would have mm. major ones um, at the grocery store. I started ordering everything in. And like, I, mean, I don't know if I've even told you, I'm like about 15 pounds away from losing my COVID weight. Mm. That's how bad, you know, mm -hmm. I gained just over a year. I gained like 80 pounds mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. just over a year. So, you know, it would just, but what do you do, right? You don't yeah. roll over. Yeah. You know, I have things I want to do in my life. I have kids to look, to love and look after a wife I want to share my life with. Mm -hmm. That's been the cool thing is that you've still been doing it. Yeah. Like we, and we've talked about that. Like, the only way for you to fail or for you to lose is for you to quit. Right, exactly. And you haven't quit. Like right. you might have a day that's bad. You might have two days that's bad or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Still get back on plan. Like we, you're checking in with me and my brother. We're kind of starting to do that for each other like every yeah. day and just yeah. trying to stay on top of it because if you don't stay out in front of it, you know, what could happen is is not great, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it snowballs fast, right? It snowballs fast. Uh, I just have to be very intentional and and learn how to fight this fight against the appetite better, right? Have a plan, have, have, have healthier sources to relieve my stress, call, text a buddy, yeah. you know, go for a walk, you know, do other things, do other things. So ignore that thing that says, hey, you know, you need to eat your feelings right now. And yeah. I was telling you guys this the other day, eating your feelings is such like a passive way to say it to people that you kind of hope they'll understand without diving too deep in it. But when you dive deep in it, man, it is... It's nasty. Mm. It's really nasty. Hi, hey, Roger family. How's it going? We talk about sleep all the time on this podcast. That's why we were partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. Now, this mattress is the Tesla of sleep. It's the Tesla of beds. Its technology tracks your heart rate, your heart rate variability. It changes its own temperature based off the way you sleep so that you get better sleep every single night. It is quite literally insane. Check them out. Andrew, how do they get it? Yes, and before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know that you can actually set the bed to wake you up silently. I know that sounds weird, but actually the bed starts vibrating around your head and it doesn't wake up the entire house hold the way my phone used to do back in the day. So now I just kind of have the bed wake me up silently and it's amazing. You guys got to head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. That's E-I-G-H-T sleep.com slash power project. When you guys go there, you'll see a banner across the top saying that you're going to receive $150 off automatically. So again, that's 8sleep.com slash power project to receive $150 off your pod pro cover or your pod pro cover and mattress combo. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to the podcast. It's you told me that it's uh humiliating um being trapped by the thoughts that you're trapped by. I, I, yeah, I mean absolutely. Who wants to admit that there's this like a uh, Mr. Hyde in your own ear mm. yelling you yelling at you to do crazy stuff, right? That's it's uh but that's what it feels like. It feels like someone else is like almost kind of controlling yeah it's it i mean of course there's the whole like i mean this whole idea that it's i mean my obesity is very multifaceted mark i mean sometimes yeah sure the fight is like i just don't want to like be, pig out eat french fries whatever a lot of times it's oh my god i'm stressed mm. oh you should eat that would fix your stress mm. it's wild it's insane and it's a battle that sometimes you don't want to fight. Does yeah. it feel like it works? Like when you do eat, does it feel like, like when you're done kind of eating something, do you feel like, like some sort of release or, sure, I'm or sure. are you just like, fuck man, why the, why both, do right? That? Yeah. Both probably a little serotonin mm. gets let in and then a little regret gets let in right after. Right. So, but that, but that monster's quieted. Fucking deadly loop. Yeah, it is. It is. Brutal. Uh, what, um, I mean, how have you handled, because we were talking about this earlier with uh, Spencer, because I can't think of his last name. Nadolski. Nadolski, sorry, sir. Um, you know, because he was giving the uh, analogy of like 
oh, I popped one tire, so I'm going to go slash the other tires. So like when that voice comes and then you maybe you do answer him, how do you get back on your horse and be like, no, fuck that guy. Like I'm going to finish the day uh, strong or even tomorrow I'm going to start strong and you know not even uh, pay attention to that voice. Uh, you have to, I mean, I think you have to seek inspiration. You have to like, you know, I, there is, there is, there are some good benefits to social media, right? You find somebody like Mark, somebody, uh, somebody that you admire, someone you follow. I mean, I, I could honestly, I don't want to start the list because it just won't end, but you find someone that's out there doing it. You find someone that's giving you a piece of good coaching. You get some sleep, right? Sleep it off, wake up, fresh perspective, and you have to know your why's. Every day you have to know, why am I doing this? Mm. Why am I doing this? And, and uh, maybe that's a cliche, but I think it's really true. So, I mean, you just, you have to get up and try again, right? Because mm -hmm. like you said, you only, it, only, it only fails if you stop trying, right? right. I'm, not, I'm not like uh, impressed with the gains I've made. I don't think I've made like super fast, impressive gains, but I'm proud and I'm happy, I'm not content, but I'm happy. I feel good. I can move better. I feel good that I can get in a 20, 30, 45 mm -hmm. minute workout of just steady movement and not, and, and not walk away from it limping, you know, yes. that's important, right? That's really important. But having a plan, you can't, uh, you have to have a plan on what the diet is, right? Some people don't seem to know how to wing the diet. You can't just, mm. you know, you have to have a plan and you have to do everything to stick to the plan, right? I don't have a, natural intuitiveness on how much to eat and what to eat. I know, I know that there's a lot of conversations on, you know, eat intuitively and just, you do track your stuff, right? I do. Yeah. yeah I track my stuff. You, I, you've tried to like not track it. And then you just found that like tracking it, it works great. I, I, works I, best for you. I find, I find counting the calories just helps. It mm -hmm. just, it just keeps my mindfulness to anything to keep that autopilot from kicking in. Mm -hmm. Cause that autopilot messes me up. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you don't want to become obsessive about it. There's, and there's a balance to everything. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Pat Project family, we appreciate you checking out this clip. Check out another one. Just, just, just go check out another one. Or comment down below and let us know what you liked about this one. But we love you guys, and we're going to keep bringing you the heat. So comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Okay? Peace.